Hey guys, it's Liz from Less Bit More Wine. I just wanted to go over Rover. I did a post on this back in 2016, I believe, and it's been a hot minute and Rover's updated some stuff and I've done a lot more um, work on, on Rover Walking Dogs. So I thought I'd go ahead and update this post, do a new video. And so I just thought I'd walk you through what Rover looks like these days and what it's like to work on there. So um, when you go to rover.com, you would just sign in if you want to become a sitter you aren't already you would go to become a sitter so let me go ahead and sign in and then so these are sitters that have watched my dog um because i use rover to book sitters too because i love it um and then i have my dashboard over here when i click on my name and so it's it's showing my availability the next two weeks I can go ahead and confirm that yes, this is my availability. And then, you know, are you going to be available Labor Day weekend or not? Because holidays can play a role in, in you know, normally a lot more people are looking for pet sitters or dog walkers or whatever. Um, and there's also like a, a holiday rate. So if it's during like a holiday weekend, you'll get paid more. And Rover just does that automatically. Um, you can see this is what I have redeemable right now, this is what I have pending. Um, I can say I'm available for the weekend and then it says asking me to rebook sitters which I, I've used them a few times um, for my dog <clears throat> now for the work I do I can see my all my pending payments and promo codes so I've actually earned so far this year um, about two thousand dollars just about it'll be over two thousand dollars here shortly um, but it doesn't take out taxes, so you have to do that yourself. And if you earn more than $600, they're going to send you a 1099 um, so that you can do your taxes. So I, I do pull out money for taxes, and I, I count it. I use QuickBooks Self-Employed. I just count the rover money as income, and it calculates it for me. So it's pending earnings, withdrawals, payments. You know, so these are payments to <coughs> excuse me, um, the dog sitters that walk my dog. So I usually just use my rover earnings to pay for what my dog needs. Um, okay, then inbox, this is where pretty much all of the information about your dog walking gig. So I do dog walking primarily. I don't really do dog sitting or, or boarding, which means you bring the dog to stay with you um, because my dog's not that nice. <laughs> um, and, and because I have pets myself, I can't go stay at someone else's house to take care of their animals. So I just do dog walking. Um, so it's got upcoming stays. I've got a few. Um, and so this, and again, it'll mix in the ones that you're getting paid for and the ones you're paying for because this guy's watching my dog, um, whereas these are dogs that I'm walking. Um, and then it shows past days as well. So these are dogs I've walked. Um, so Veda's a regular of mine. Um, she's a super sweet dog. I get to take care of her quite a bit. I've, I've had a bit of a break from her because her, her, her mom's a teacher and so she's been off in the summer and I haven't walked her as much. Um, but so I just have like a handful of regular clients primarily, and then I get some one-offs here and there, um, including like a rabbit. And then archive requests. So one of the really important things about Rover is setting yourself up for success because you want to show up, you know, in the search when someone's looking for a service. Um, so this one I got a couple days ago, and her dog looks super cute, but she's outside my service radius. So I keep my service radius really small. I think it's like a mile because I really just want to walk the neighbors because I don't want to have to drive 10 minutes, do a 30 minute walk and then drive another 10 minutes. It's almost an hour of my time and it's not worth the like 10, $12 I'm getting paid um, for, you know, most of an hour. So I, I primarily walk neighbor dogs in my neighborhood so I can walk, you know, it's a quick five minute walk to go get the dog 30 minutes around the block, five minutes home, you know, and it, it just results in a much better hourly rate for me, especially when I'm, doing them back to back and they're like in the same building so that's a personal preference of mine so you can go to set up your profile to adjust those things because if you get a request that's outside your radius and you turn it down it doesn't impact your rank so if you're constantly getting requests that are in your service area and you're constantly turning them down rover's not going to want to show you to in this you know as high up in the search list because they're like well she's not he or she is not taking the gigs. So they want to um, promote or rank people that are close by, but also have a history of accepting dog walking requests, sitting requests, whatever your services are. So when I go in here to my profile, 
I can see my services rates, my setter profile, and I can they give you some um, ability to promote. So let's take a look at my services. So dog boarding is the the easiest way to earn money and probably the most money. You can easily charge a minimum of thirty dollars a night and upwards of more. Um, to be perfectly honest, but I don't do dog boarding and I do just fine. I, I've, um, some weeks I've made, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Um, and on average I've earned like an extra 250 bucks a month, um, just on Rover this year. So I've done well without doing the more lucrative dog boarding and house sitting, but you can absolutely do those if you can. Um, so I do drop in visits where I'll go feed, play, you know, if it's cat or dog, um, an example of this is a puppy that, they got in February, and so I went over twice a day because he was being crate trained, so he was in a crate, so he needed to be let out. Um, he also couldn't, like, go to doggy daycare or anything like that because he wasn't old enough and he hadn't had all his shots, so he just, he couldn't go play with dogs or whatnot, so I just, I played with him, um, you know, through, through around. So you do need the app, and later on in the post, or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you go to the post over on Lost at More Wine, I'll have screenshots of the app and what it's like to do rover cards, which you need to do for drop-in visits and dog walks. Um, they're not necessary for dog boarding and house sitting, although I'd recommend um, using the app because it's a great tool and it's a great way to just send photos and stuff to the um, to the clients because who doesn't love getting pictures of their dog? Doggy daycare. Again, this is not something I do because I have um, animals and I only live in a one-bedroom apartment, so I'm not going to have like other dogs come over for the day. Dog walking. This is what I do. I do the app. It's active. You can put it away mode. You can make it so I only get repeat clients. So if I'm assuming an especially busy time at work, which like now, <laughs> um, then I can say, you know, only my repeat clients. I don't want to take any on anyone new right now. So you can really control what services you do and offer. Um, and then you can do rates as well. So the way I decided on my rates, and I've, I've raised them a little bit, is I looked at kind of what the average was for my area, and a lot of people charge like $15, $16. And so to make sure I got dog walking requests, I just went a little bit lower, and I said 12 Like 12 is fine for me, especially because I'm keeping my radius really small, which means my take is ten twenty. Now, because I've been on Rover so long, I have a slightly higher um, like rate um, than new dog sitter. So if you joined Rover today, I think you get 80% of your earnings, whereas I get 85 just because I've been on here a long time. Um, service options. So this is where you can adjust, like I said, that radius. So what is the maximum distance you'll travel? So it's three miles. I can make that smaller. Um, how many can you do per day? So I max it out at three because after that, my it's just, just filling up my day and it's really breaking it up in a way that I'm not getting my work done. Um, and then the time frames. I've only had like one or two like evening requests and it was someone that I had done like daytime walks for before so I knew the, the neighborhood and area. I would not take as like a first dog walking request from someone an evening one because you don't know the area, you don't know, you know just safety wise I wouldn't do it. Um, and then I have a cancellation policy of moderate. So, um, you know, if they cancel like within day before, um, it's like a refund. If it's seven days, four weeks out, then it's like a full refund. Um, and you can, if, if there's like, if the dog owners communicate with you or pet owners communicate with you and you're like, you know what, it's fine, totally get it, let's just, you know, um, cancel it, like, or uh, I need to move it to a different day, like, so cancel today and book something else, um, or just adjust it if they've booked multiple days. If it, if you're fine with giving them that refund for that one walk, you can communicate that to Rover, and they'll, for that one instance, give the full refund. Um, and I've done that before because I was like, this is a regular client. They made a mistake booking it. Uh, you know, I'm fine with giving them that refund. So it, it's really up to you. Um, and I should note on the rates, you can do additional rates. You can do holiday rates. Um, like I said, uh, oh, I guess you do set this. I used to think it was automatic. Um, extra dog rate. So if you're walking two dogs, um, puppy rate is another one. So you'll notice my normal drop in visit or walk is $12, but then my puppy rate is 15 because puppies just are a lot more work and a lot more energy. Um, so I do keep I, the puppy rate and then you get the um, holiday rate as well for the drop ins. 
So that's that. And then dog preferences. So if you can't handle larger dogs, you can you can say so. Um, I I'm usually pretty good. I grew up with dogs, so I'm very familiar with them, and I can I can handle lots of dogs. But yeah. So um, and if you accept puppies or not, because some people don't for various reasons, and it's fine. But you it really gives you control to work with the kind of animals that you're comfortable. And then the calendar shows you um, what's going on. So you can see I've got, I've had stuff booked. So one of three booked for dog walking, two of three booked for dog walking on the 17th. Yeah, I mean, that's mostly it. Um, when I will say it's important that you respond to requests quickly. That reflects positively on you, even if you don't take it. Because, you know, Rover wants people that are, they're going to be responsive to request whether or not they accept the the dog walking request or not just because then if, if you can't do it that person looking for dogs there can move on and try someone else so respond quickly you can do it on your phone just download the app the app is fantastic makes it super easy it actually comes in as a text message and you can text it back like you can just text back you don't have to go open the app to respond um so it's up to you kind of what you prefer definitely have your phone on you when you go to do the dog walking or dog sitting um because for the dog walking and drop-ins, you're required to do the rover cards. Um, and you have to take a picture of the dog, so you need smartphone and the app and all that jazz. But it's really easy, it's really nice, it makes it easy to mark, you know, how many times the dog went to the bathroom, whether you fed them, gave them water, any notes of like, hey, they tore this up, they seem fine, um, you know, whatever the case may be. So definitely check out Rover. It's a great way to make extra money. Um, it may take a little while to get that first gig, but like I said, make sure you're responding quickly to any requests. Um, price yourself competitively and then just be really honest with yourself with which dog walking gigs you're willing to take and make sure to structure your profile accordingly um, because you want to have the right rates obviously but obviously you don't want to have to go all the way across town like 20 miles to go take care of a dog like that's probably not going to be worth it so just keep that in mind and you'll be well on your way to making extra money and then you can always do photos um, details, testimonials. If you, you know, want to kind of help improve your chances, you can ask someone that you've maybe taken care of their dog in the past, perhaps not through Rover, but just like a neighbor or family friend um, to do a testimonial for you. For the So the first testimonial that I ever got was from actually from my sister. I house sat for her and I took care of her two dogs. So I was like, do you mind just submitting a testimonial for me? So that I have something on my profile saying, hey, I, I'm good at this. I know how to handle dogs. And she has huge dogs. So in fact, there were two of them. It really helped. And then photos as well. So definitely a clear picture of you. This is a really old photo of me. I should do a new one. But also pictures of you with dogs. Um, showing that you know how to, to handle them. Dogs like you. It just it goes a long way. And again, I should probably update and add some more. Um, and then, you know, you can choose whether, you know, to do a upgraded background check so you, you need to do a background check but you can do an upgraded one which just gives you like an extra badge i never have it's been fine um so it's, yeah so this is my dog and the option to promote if you want and then you can view let me go view my this one might pop up there we go view profile so when people when i show up in the search results you know i i've walked a lot of dogs but i've only got 12 reviews uh, but it's all it's five stars right um, and I've got eight repeat clients. So it'll show how many repeat clients because if people are willing to go back to you, it means you did a good job. So even if they don't leave you a review necessarily, um, they'll be able to see this and be like, oh, okay, she's got repeat clients. She does a really great job. Um, so it, these are the various dogs. So these are pictures I've, I've taken of, of the dogs. Um, so this was just the, the dog got into a bunch of papers and I wanted to send them a picture and be like, just so you know, and I picked up the big pieces, but I couldn't find a broom. You know, um, these are some cats I've taken care of. This was like the cutest dog ever. Um, you know, so I, I, I do enjoy the animals. If you don't like animals, this isn't going to be a good side gig for you. It's showing my service radius um, and my availability. So, and it, and it just, it does a great job and you can see all the different pictures. So, um, it shows my response rate as 100%. So I always respond, even if it's someone, even if it's a gig I can't take, I just say, hey, sorry, this isn't going to work for me. Um, and then response time a few minutes. Because when you're looking for a sitter, these are things you want to see. So uh, definitely make sure you are on it when you get those requests. They come to your phone. And, and even if it's just a, 
hey, I'll have to check my calendar and get back to you because maybe you're at work or something. Like, that'll do. You know, be like, I'll get back to you in a couple of hours. I'm sorry, I can't chat right now. Like, that explanation is fine because it will show you as having responded. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions about Rover, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments.